Hey dolls, it's me, JB, and it is 2018, and with a new year comes new beginnings, even though every day is actually a new beginning, but the year, just for some reason, it just sparks so much expectation for people and everything. It's really like a great goal setting time, and so I just really wanted to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to talk a little less about goal setting, and instead I'm going to talk about getting something back that you so desperately need that is the most valuable thing that we can have, and that's time. And so first I'm going to start off with the whole goal setting because it kind of goes into it. So for 2018, I've actually decided to change up my format just a little bit. I'm going to actually be doing videos on Tuesdays and Fridays um, will be my video days, and they will still all have one of the three things that I do, and that is beauty, inspire, or life. And so this video is actually considered an inspired video because we're going to talk about 2018. So now I'm going to go a little bit into my goal setting thing, and then I can get into what I'm doing to help me for 2018. Because if you've watched any of my videos, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, 2017, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I'm still getting over my allergies, so I'm like, I feel good right now, but like the allergy medications just kind of dries you out, and so I'm like, my face feels a little bit itchy and dry and cracky, but besides that, I'm feeling actually pretty good, which is good, because I have to go back to work tomorrow, so no more sitting around the house. So anyway, back to what I was talking about, because y'all know I ramble. So 2017 was not the best year for me. Um, life-wise or goal-wise, um, it just, it was a rough year. And so when I decided to go back and look over 2017, now typically I go and look over 2017 um, around the end of, well, around the beginning to mid-December. This year I looked a little bit earlier um, because when I was doing my monthly my monthly looks, when I would remember to look at, I realized there were so many goals that I just was not getting done. I was just going through so much that I was just I had a hard time really, really focusing in. So I actually started in November setting out my goals for 2015. 2000, 2015? I just went in the past. Um, 2018. And then I looked at what I hadn't accomplished for 2017. And I had to add those on. Well, for 2017, I had a lot of things that needed to be done that affected things in 2018. And so because of that, I cannot not do the 2017 goals. They still, for the most part, have to be done because they are a factor. So it's almost like I have double time the goals. So when I'm sitting down and doing my goal process, which I usually have this method that I do that actually... Um, I don't know if Dave Ramsey thought of it, but I know that I first heard it from him years ago, and I really liked it. It talked about the seven different areas in your life and then the five different things that you do to break down those goals, and that's usually how I do mine. But um, because I had so many, when I did it that way, it was really super, super, super overwhelming. And so I was listening to uh, Michael Hyatt, and he was actually talking about goal setting too. I was listening to one of his webinars. And he was talking about picking seven to ten goals. So I decided to take both of these methods and kind of combine them in together in a way to make this kind of work for this, this 2018 where I need to actually do 2017 and 2018. So I need two times the amount of time. So I decided to push these two goal things together. So I did pick my top seven to ten goals and I used the same breakdown method that um, Dave Ramsey talks about in his goal setting to make this goal list. I took all the other goals that did not make it in the uh, top 7 to 10 and I put them in a separate list to hopefully be able to pick up along the way as I am going through and hopefully making traction and able to pick up some of these goals that may not make it in this year because I am focusing on these top 7 to 10 goals. Actually, I think I ended up with 10. One of them, one of the goals actually may be done by the end of this book, so I might be able to throw another one on there. Because what then I also did is I sat down and I scheduled out when I was going to do these goals. So some of them are starting this month, some are starting in February, some are starting in March, and then there's a, two of them 
that are actually a year. And so I have done all that. I've typed them all up. I have my goal board over here on the side of my bed. And so they're all there and they're listed. And it just kind of helps me to focus in and really just hone in on these goals. Um, one of the most important things you can do when it comes to goals are to write them down. And I think the second most important thing you can do is evaluate each month to see how you've made on that goal and how it's working. And does that goal need to be tweaked? Because sometimes you'll have a goal and you'll think that this was a, this was a good goal. This was a good idea that this was like something that you really need to do. But then as you got into it, you realize that there were some steps in there that were missing. And maybe that's a goal that there needs to be some things happen before you can actually get to that goal. Because goal setting really, I mean, for, for a lot of goals that we have, we really don't know how long it's going to take us. It's just like a wink and a prayer. We just kind of go, okay, this is a goal that I have. I'm going to try to do it by then. But then it may not be realistic. And that sometimes is the hard thing. It's like, are you procrastinating or is that not a realistic time period for that goal? And that's why I feel like monthly evaluations are really, really important when it comes to goal setting. And also having them up somewhere. Um, I'm lucky enough, sorry, my allergies now I'm starting to get kind of stuffy. I am lucky enough to be able to like have my board in my room in an area, but not everyone may not be able to. So I actually also have my goals written out and I don't have it next to me in a little notebook too. So it's written in a notebook and it's also on the board. But um, if you're someone where you're like, well, I got some goals, but I don't have a place where I can put it up in my room because you know, either like I share the room with someone or I share a space with someone and I don't want, or, you know, I don't want people to see or, you know, then just have it in a little journal. It's just really, really important. Or even in your phone, the most important thing is, is that you write these goals down, that you're able to look at them, evaluate them, and really be able to say, okay, yes, I did meet that goal instead of having it just in your head. So, those are just like some little things, but we're going to kind of get out of goal because um, we're going to get out of goals. We're going to kind of, I wanted to talk about goals, but that is not the whole reason that I really wanted to do this video. The reason that I wanted to do this video was because of the fact that I have two years that I really need to combine as much as possible into one. And so with that being done, it really made me um, have to sit and evaluate my time so that's what I started doing around November I started to evaluate my time because that's the most valuable thing that we could have when it comes to goal setting and it makes you put that when you have that list you you can take that list and go are the accomplishment of these goals more important than the activity that I want to do at this given time and that's how you kind of decide like where you kind of find your time. So the first thing I did with this finding my time was I did do for a week. I kept a little, little, I just printed out like a little time sheet thing that had like 15 minute increments from offline. And I wrote down what I was doing all day long, which if you're honest, starts to get a little scary and you have to be honest on these things because if you're not honest on it there's no point you're not going to really find where you waste your time but I did find very very quickly where I waste a lot of time so excluding the fact that you know you got to go to work you got to sleep you got to eat what else are we doing that we're wasting our time so I see clients and because I see clients sometimes my time schedule is not as um, like etched in stone as, as when like I used to do accounting and I went to work from nine to five or from eight to five or whatever it was. Now I may have an appointment here or an appointment there or an appointment here. So I have to allow for those, those motions in my life of where it's up and down and where, you know, one Monday I may be working and one Monday I may not be working as much or I may have an appointment here or I may have an appointment there. And so you have to allow for those things and be able to roll with the flow of your life when it comes to that. Because working, of course, is important. So especially if you're like me and you're single and your income is the only income. So working is, you know, pretty doggone important. 
So through that exercise, I found a few things that I needed to cut. And then I also found something else that I just wanted to do for me to kind of keep me motivated through. The so one of the big time wasters that I have is television. Oh my gosh. And I use television in the background as just like noise, which is, which a lot of people are like, well, that's not that big of a deal, but it kind of is because it's still, even though you're not sitting and watching it actively, it's still a distraction and it's still something that draws your attention away. And it's like, when, and, and, and actually, as I'm doing it, I think, when did I become so afraid of silence? Like, I'm not afraid of silence, but why is it that I feel like I need that going all the time? Like, I'm not a person who's afraid to be in the quiet. So why am I doing this? So I decided to make a crazy decision. And some of y'all are going to be like, what? And I actually, I think I said this in one of my other videos. But I have chosen seven television shows to watch. Now, when I first started doing this, it was super hard, y'all. Because, like, sorry, I got my blanket in front of me because I'm a little cold. Um, because, um, I realized I had like way more than seven shows, but the reason I came up with seven and this is where it comes, that gives me one show a day, roughly 45 minutes to an hour. I typically watch, I don't have cable, so I typically watch things on Hulu, Netflix, or I work, watch it on the network channels. So there's some commercials on some limited commercials or whatever, whatnot. So because of that, it's not usually a full hour, but that is seven hours a week. Now, this excludes the time that I spend watching YouTube. I try not to go over another additional about hour of YouTube time, but most of the stuff that I watch on YouTube is news and like, um, I watch a lot of news. I don't know why I watch so much news on YouTube. I guess because it's just the clips and I don't have to sit and watch the whole thing. Um, I also watch um, like TED Talks. Um, I follow some people on there that are inspiration. I'm actually going to get into that a little bit later. But I said seven of the like no brain kind of watching shows. So of course, of course, the first one on there was The Walking Dead. You don't know how I feel about The Walking Dead. And so, um, so I put, you know, I was ranking them by most important. So I had like The Walking Dead. And at that time I had like how to get away with murder because y'all know oof, well I don't know if y'all know that but I love some how to get away with murder I love some Chandra so um so I had that and like how to get away with murder and murder mur allergies how to get away with murder scandal which is their last season it's not been my most favorite season but it's the last season so I was like okay gotta keep that on the list so as I'm making this list like I'm like what in the world like I have a whole bunch of shows on these and then as I actually started looking at the shows and like really getting into like the show, there were so many of them that I was watching out of the habit of watching. For example, I cannot today. For example, um, Empire. So I love Empire but this last season the beginning of the season my sister said it got better but I'm still not adding it to the list um I just I wasn't enjoying it and every time I watch it I just think ugh at the end of it and it's like why was I wasting my time watching that like why was I wasting wasting so much time watching that and um that's when I, I realized, like, okay, some of these shows that I watch out of habit, I need to take off. So, now, here's my little funny story. So, as soon as I picked my seven shows, then the season ended, and so I lost three of my shows, like, the next day. And so I was like, whoa. So, that's when I decided to do a, I can do a rotation in and out of shows. So, but it has to still be seven shows. Seven shows. So, uh, with How to Get Away with Murder ended and Scandal and Grey's Anatomy, oh. So, I had to, to um, drop those off the list and I said, okay, I will, I will allow myself to replace them with seven shows. And then when they come back on, if I still value that show over this show, then I will bring it back. Right now, I actually only have five shows that I believe that are actually on the list. 
because there was just, I discovered there just weren't that many shows that I enjoyed that much. So that really, really helped to keep from wasting so much time. The next thing I noticed that wasted a lot of, a lot of time was social media. And so I usually at the beginning of the week will schedule out my social media posts for business and everything like that. But I noticed I spent so much time throughout the day just like checking it. So I got to the point where I said, you know what? No, I'm done doing this. So now for the week, I did not get off social media and I'm allowing myself. I haven't decided on the amount of time yet. It's been the holidays, so I've gotten on it a little bit more during the holidays because I, I've had 10 days off of work. And so um, I think I'm think i thinking my happy place may be an hour. That hour also includes scheduling and then to just kind of get caught up on people. I've also been working on cleaning my feed and unfollowing people. Uh, there's some people that are on my Facebook that I love dearly. But the stuff that they post is just not stuff that I want in my face all the time. And um, so it makes it so that when I do get on social media for that short amount of time that I have, that I'm able to actually see things that I want to see. And it's not to say that I love anybody any less because I unfollow them. It's just that maybe at this time they are actually just posting things that I just, they're just things I don't want to see. They're just things that I just don't want in my head all the time. And that's okay because it's it's not saying anything about them. It's just saying that it's something that I can't handle at this point in time in my life. And that's fine because I have to protect me. So that's one big thing I've been doing. They've actually added this new feature that I just noticed where you can actually like unfollow someone for 30 days, which I thought was very interesting, which it's like now even Facebook understands that there are certain news cycles and things that go on and all these people get on these bandwagons and all they do is post and post and post and post and post and post. And it's just like, enough is enough. Like you just, I just can't like, I just cannot like you can only take so much of that crap in and then it's just like, bleh. And so I'm all about it. So that's another thing. So now I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm, my happy place is going to be 30 minutes to an hour I am picking Sunday afternoons right now because that's typically when I like to do my um, scheduling of posts. So I thought Sunday afternoon sounds like a good time. So right now, that's kind of where I'm going to be. I won't really know until like January gets past if that's going to work or if I'm going to have to change that up just a little bit. Another thing that I noticed that I spent a lot of wasted time on, and this is actually the, the last thing that I noticed I spent a lot of wasted time on is listening to podcasts. So I love listening to podcasts, but there are a lot of podcasts that I was listening to that it's just like, I love like true crime and stuff like that. And those podcasts are great. But at the end of the day, after I've listened to that podcast, what more have I gained towards reaching my goals? And it was getting to the point where I had like seven or eight true crime podcasts that I was listening to. And I really didn't need to be listening to that many. Like that was just way too many. So I've cut it down to two that I really like. And then I have a third one that I will like decide. I still have it on my list, but I've unsubscribed. So I'll decide if I want to listen to that episode. And then I've been picking other podcasts that are going to be more towards helping me um, get to the point of achieving goals than anything else. And actually, all in all, I've limited the amount of podcasts that I'm listening to because I want to listen to more audiobooks. I used to listen to audiobooks all the time. And then I discovered podcasts. Well, I say I discovered. I um, discovered how much I enjoyed listening to true crime podcasts. And then, like, that overtook me actually reading books. So I was like, well, listening to books. Like, yeah, listening to audiobooks, not exactly reading them. But anyway, um, so I had to limit that to make time for something that was more important. And the more important thing to me is either listening to an audiobook or actually sitting and reading a book.
that is more important to me than listening to all these true crime podcasts that I do really love and enjoy, but I just had too many of them in my head. And, you know, now I'm like, I know how to like work any kind of system at this point in time. But anyway, I just had to limit it. And it's not that it was a bad thing. It was just, it was a time drain for me. So those are the three things that I noticed on my list that just really, really drained time. So I decided, okay, now I'm gaining back my time. So then after that, I decided, okay, so now that I'm going to be gaining back the time for these three areas that I wasted so much time. Okay, so now with the things that are on my list that I want to achieve, I decided that I'm going to get very, very strict about time scheduling. Goal, some of my goals this year, I want to make sure I'm putting out two videos a week and I'm doing two blog posts a week. Um, so what I'm doing is I am actually timing and scheduling those things. So scheduling with me can sometimes be really, really hard. And I know some people are like, you know, well, if it's not on your calendar and if it's not in a top spot, it won't get done. That works for me to an extent, but sometimes it does not work for me because sometimes I'll put on a time spot and something will come up like an appointment and I'll have to bump it. So what I do, I have this app that I use. It's, it's a productivity app. And so what, it, what I do is I put in for each of the days, like the things that I want to do in those days and by it, I put how long I want to do it. So that morning, a lot of times I'll go in and I'll schedule them out. Sometimes I won't, depending on the day of the week that it is. If I know that it's a day that there's something may come up, because there's some days, there's for some reasons, like I know, you kind of know in your schedule, like for me, Fridays, there's a good chance of things coming up on Fridays. I do not know why. And for some reason, Tuesdays. And those are actually the days that I have to post videos up because I know that there's a possibility that something else might come up so I can't film on those days. I don't know why. That's just my schedule. That's just my life. That's how things just seem to pop up on those days. It's crazy, but it's true. So, like, I'll try to schedule them out in my schedule and actually put them in, but sometimes for me that becomes overwhelming, causing me anxiety, but I've noticed when I've used the productivity app, when I put the productivity thing in, I can just slide it over to say that I just said that I did that. I did not need to actually slide it. <laughs> Let's unslide it. So I can slide it over to say that I have done it for that day. And it keeps up with everything that I'm supposed to get done in that day. So if I have one of those days where actually sitting down and scheduling it is not a thing, then I just kind of go with the flow. And sometimes I've noticed with me, if I schedule myself out too, too terribly much, my brain goes nuts so crazy over that. I think that's the artistic side of me. So what I try to do is I'm like, okay, between, let's say if it's a, a like a slow day or something, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., I am going to work on the things that are on my checklist. And each thing has like a time slot. Like I'm studying for a thing that I'm wanting to do for my business, I'm studying how to use InDesign. I have the Adobe package thing, and so I'm going to spend 30 minutes twice a week watching videos and learning how to use it better so that I can do this thing for my business. And so I know that in that 10 to 2 time on, that, on certain days, that will be one of the things in those times. Um, I've been doing this for a while. It's weird. Some days it works great for me. Some days it doesn't work great for me. I have to chalk that up to my crazy, crazy schedule. But this year I'm going, I've decided to be more intentional. And since I'm blocking out all other like distractions like TV and social media and podcasts, it should make it a little bit easier. So I'll give an update on that to see how that really, really works. Now, another thing that I really wanted to do for this year, besides my goal setting, I had decided to pick five people that I wanted to follow. These five people are um, have different levels of success in different industries, but all these five people um, have success in different ways that are a type of goal for me. And so what I'm going to be doing is just researching these people, looking more into them and their lives and how they achieve their goals. Um, just to see how they do things because sometimes 
sometimes you need help when it comes to achieving your goals. Sometimes you need to see how other people did something either exactly how you did it or similar to what, you, what you've done. Um, my only problem is with some of my goals that I want to do, I haven't found anyone who's done exactly, um, which is good, but I found enough people that have done different aspects close enough to where I could follow their life. Uh, for instance, um, one of the people that are on my list, um, I'm trying to find his name, so I don't call him, but I, well, I've been calling him the Starbucks guy. Um, it's Howard, oh gosh, Howard, oh, I can't pronounce his last name anywhere. Anyway, so, but I wanted to research that company because the ideal of Starbucks did not start with coffee. And I, it just intrigued me to find out, um, like, how you, they started from one area and then made it to where they are to be as big and to be franchised and be such a big name. That just really totally intrigues me. And then the uh, four of the people that are on my list are on there for different reasons. Um, one person that I have on my list is on there is because they weren't, um, they were 60, in their 60s when they achieved of their greatest success. So not saying that I want to be 60 when I achieve my greatest success, but I am now a little bit older. Um, I started my first business when I was in my 20s, but now I'm older. Things have changed. Things have morphed for me of what I thought that the business would be to where I'm at now. Things have changed and things have not been exactly what I thought it would be then. And so now that I'm getting older, it's like, it makes you think, oh my gosh, like, how many people actually make it really big in different industries um, once they've gotten older? And it's very, very eye-opening to see how many people did make it big. I was actually watching the um, the founder that, that was about the um, company McDonald's. Um, and um, even though that, it's actually on Netflix. You should definitely watch it if you're interested in anything in business aspect because I'm not sure how true it was to form, but the guy, Ray, um, who actually made McDonald's as big, as big as it was, was not the person who came up with the idea. Um, and he was actually 52 when he met the two brothers who came up with the idea. And just watching all of it happen and the aspects of business, because business can be very, very messy. Business can be... Um, it can be who can step on who to get to the top. Um, not that I want to step on anyone to get to the top of anything, but it does just kind of open your mind and open your eyes to different things. And so it was actually a friend recommended it for me, and I'm happy that he did. It was a very, very interesting movie, very, very good. I love the fact that he was 52 when he came across these people and um, was able to get into this idea of where he took it to because I mean everyone knows McDonald's everyone knows Starbucks and so you know am I saying that I'm going to become the next Starbucks who knows <laughs> would love to but the whole thing is you never know where something's going to take you you never know where it's going to start and that's why Starbucks really um, resonated with me because of where I wanted to start and where things are like it has been um, such a big change for me of what I actually saw with my eyes and where things are now going. And so I'm just really interested to really dive into that story there. He's actually my January dive in. So I've actually went to the library and got one of the books that he wrote and I am ready to dive in that for January. But anyway, this is my absolutely long and detailed not detailed, long and rambling video about 2008, 2008 and setting goals. Um, the most important thing is if you're not setting goals to start, even if it's a little goal, even if it's a goal of saving so much money so that you can go on a vacation, goals are so very much, so very important in our lives. Having a goal is really what kind of helps you to just to keep going in life and knowing that there is something that you're trying to reach and something that you're trying to achieve. And I think it also just keeps you in that kind of work grind. When you have goals, you just keep grinding towards them and working towards them. And that's really, really important. So if you haven't set your goals, do. And then 
really work out the plan of how to get to that goal and making sure that you stay on track. So like this, if this video or videos like this, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe. After this, uh, my inspired videos, I'm actually going into strength finders and uh, talking a little bit about um, my strengths and what I've learned about myself through different tests. And so I'm really, really excited about that. So um, if you want to hear a little bit more about that, make sure you click subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And um, so that way that you will know about when I am uploading all of my uh, videos. I upload, well, we are working on uploading two times a week and um, hopefully Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm trying to do it whether I have allergy problems or not because apparently the allergies are not going to leave me alone. And so until next time, I hope you are setting your goals and sticking to them. But until then, stay gorgeous.